Hi, it's Gwen Fox, and I am so glad that you're here. Today, I am going to be painting on a painting that is in, I would call, similar to the teenage stage. It's at the beginning stages. Some of it's still wet. We still have that, but that's okay. Uh, it's dry enough. This is an oil. It's dry enough that I can, I can work on it and thought I would show you how I do this and Maybe that'll help you. Maybe you'll have some questions of which I can answer. Now, one of the ways that I work, and you don't have to do this, but it helps me tremendously, and that is to do a thumbnail sketch. And I know you're saying, oh, eh, I don't want a thumbnail sketch. I hate thumbnail sketches. You know what? They're pretty darn good because... What they do is they allow you to eliminate all of the problems before you get to the canvas. And uh, not that that worked here with me on this one, but it, I know where I can go now. So here is my thumbnail sketch, and I'm going to show you one. I'm going to get it closer. Here is my thumbnail sketch. It is done on newsprint. Why? Because Newsprint's just cheap, and then I like to do lots of them. And this, I usually do them about an inch. And so then I liked this one, and I made it bigger because I needed to do it in proportion, a similar proportion, it's not exact, to this canvas, which is, you know, I don't know the, I don't know the uh, measurements of it, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, what does a thumbnail sketch do? And why do I do it? Because you say, but I just go and I just paint and then something happens. Hey, that's great. But that's not the way that I do it, although I do do that sometimes. But even though you do that, sometimes you're lost a lot longer. And being lost is not something that I want to be, any longer than I have to be. I just want to get that painting and get it done put that feeling in that I want in there and that it's talking to me. So now, here's the difference. Okay, a lot of people think, a lot of students say, I don't do thumbnail sketches for the simple reason that it, it, it takes away all the creativity. Wrong. What it does is it allows you a roadmap in which to do your painting and then you put it away and the painting talks to you. So I hope you kind of get an idea on that. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tape this up to the easel just because I want to be able to see. I've got to redraw my shapes because I have goofed on some of this. And I just want to re redraw it. Get it out here so maybe we can see it. And I will hone in on this later. All right, in order to redraw my shapes, I'm going to use this pencil. It's just a sketching pencil. That's all. But now think about this. Think about where I made a mistake here. I want, I want this to be over a little bit more. So I would like for this, this line right here to come over to here and see What's, uh, see if I can do that. So now I'm going to, I'm going to take this right here with me for right now, just so I can draw in my shapes. I'm just drawing them. I'm sketching them in. It's nothing that's going to be firm. Here's one of the problems though, that I want you to be aware of. If you do do thumbnail sketches and then you transfer it, the tendency when you are painting it is to It'll end up being like a paint by number. You're going to have to paint within this shape and paint within this shape. But that's not how it's done. So I just want to make sure that you don't do that because that is the tendency that we all have. So now, okay, if I do this, I'm 
And so I'm going to bring this white area over. I'm going to bring it down to here. Will I change some of this? Probably, because I always tend to change things. Um, okay, so I kind of see where my line is here. Then, got that one. That's okay. It's kind of hard to do it on this black. Well, it kind of, not bad there. All right. Then I see that I've got a shape. This shape right here actually comes down. Actually comes down a little bit. I'm going to run out of of my line here. Now, I'm just not going to worry about the shape right down here for right now because I'm really mostly interested in getting these shapes correct that I have here and then letting them do their own thing. All right, so this, as I say, this is an oil. So I would finish this for you today, but it's just that I can't because of it needs to dry. But we are, you will see this finished and I will do it in stages. And it's, uh, it's amazing the difference in the oils and the acrylics because of the dry time and, and, the, and the glazing time. So now, what am I going to do? Where am I going to concentrate? Because now I've got to, I've got to think about this being my center of interest because I'm going to have my darkest dark and my lightest light here. And that's, you know, and then I'm going to have some entertainment in here. But I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, probably just fill in some white here. I don't want that much white. I just want to tone it down a little bit. Because I'm going to be coming over here. Now, I kind of like that, so I'm going to leave it. And remember that these are not the final things. I'm just bringing it in. I think it automatically looks so much better over here. And now, let's see, what would I like to do here? If I remember correctly, this is going to be black, and I am going to have a white next to this, but not a pure white. Okay, now let's take some asphaltum, and let this shape looks like it's getting, it's, a, a little bit bigger than what this is right here. I just want some support here, guys. I'm looking for support. So now what I'm going to do is to shape out, bring out the shape of this white since I've changed it. And I'm going to do it with my squeegee. And I love this little squeegee. I just think this little squeegee is the best thing going. Notice that I am not covering everything up in the back. And that I have kind of an, a neutral in here. I have mixed a neutral with my colors here that I'm going to be using on this. Now, 
the, all of these edges will end up being softened. Okay, now I'm going to save my paint on here, put it in my nice little pile that I like. Now I'm going to take my black with a little asphaltum, a little golden yellow, and this is where I will bring this. Because you can see that I don't have just You're saying, mm, I'm not sure that's going to work. You know what? Me either. But we're going for it. Isn't this fun though? I'm going to bring this shape all the way down here. Now you can do this scraper with acrylics as well. So don't, don't feel like just because I'm doing with oils that it's not going to work with that. It will definitely work. It will definitely work with that. So I'm going to do the same up here with the same um, combination. Now this is being held together right now by the darks. A painting is usually held together by lights or darks. And so right now, the, the darks are winning out here because I, I want this to be held together with darks. So now what am I going to do over here? And I'm going to continue with my, my white. I am going to add a little bit over there of that, of white, and just... Just bring it in. You're saying, oh, but I don't, this looks really choppy. Yeah, it is right now. That's just how it is. This is the, this is how this is going to be. But let's, let's do, let's add a little bit of this to it to warm that up. You know, isn't it fun? Aren't we the luckiest people in the entire world? I mean, I think we are. I think we really are. You know, do I want to bring this to the edge? Probably, because I made it smaller. And I want it to be able to stay that way. I mean, to, to not be broken up too bad. And the colors that I have right now are uh, Indian yellow and um, alizarin, wait a minute, alizarin orange. Yeah, uh, Indian yellow and alizarin orange, and they're just kind of mixed. Now, the key here is to stand back and look at it, of which I'm not going to be able to do, but hopefully this gives you an idea of when you get to this stage. See, now, I don't like this line per se. You know, I'd, I'd like a little, little break in it. It's at this stage now. Or, I think what I'll do, I think I'll bring some black into the white. So let me, let me just give you a, a little, hang on a minute, I got to think. Will that work? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Um, now is the time that I start asking questions. And what are the questions? It's like, 
okay, where is my center of interest? And how am I going to get the viewer to the center of interest? That's the key question here. Because if you have a center of interest here and then something over here, the, the, it's going to bounce. Like, okay, the viewer doesn't know where to go. And you know what the viewer does? The viewer passes your painting. It's like in sales, a confused mind never buys. Well, a confused view, a viewer is not going to stop in front of your painting and fall in love with it. Make sure you know where you are taking your, your viewer to the center of interest. And also make sure you know what you want the painting to say. And you're saying, I don't know what the painting to say. Decide that. Is it going to be a happy one? Is it going to be moody? Is it going to be calm? Is it going to be exciting? Whatever words that you do. When I did a painting of a lion for a commission, I wanted his eye. I wanted to have his eyes show that he was intelligent, that he was strong, and that he was brave. And so that to me. Oh no, that he was kind. He was, he was intelligent, he was uh, strong, and he was kind. That, and I always put it up here. I always put my three words. I don't have them on this. Uh, but it's amazing how those words just end up putting that feeling into your painting. It's just, you know, we all need help as much as we can get it. And to me, that keeps me focused so that I know exactly what I want this painting to say. So now on this one, I want this one to be not only happy, but, but strong. I want it to be really strong. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. The, and when it's further along, I, will, I use my favorite, favorite tool, which is this wonderful stick. Uh, I should ensure it right. It is wonderful. And that's, that's what I'll come in and I'll do lines and and so forth in order to pull it together. Because I also want it to have of interest as far as some movement. And the lines always get it, give it that. So if you've got any questions, let me know. I hope this has helped. I will continue. I will continue to work on it. And the next time we will go, we will go through what has been done and possibly be able to look at it at the end. So be sure and subscribe to the station, to this YouTube channel. I love doing these videos for you. So uh, subscribe and uh, I will see you next time. Take care. Have a good week. Bye. Thank you.